Hi, this is David Kerner with Touchpoint Property Management in Charlotte, North Carolina. And in today's blog, I'd like to go over the topic with you, the different ways that you make money off of a rental property. So whenever you purchase a rental property, multifamily property, single family home, a condo or a townhome that somebody else will be renting and you'll be collecting income on, um, it's considered an asset and you're controlling an asset. And when you control an asset, the benefit is that you are passively creating income on it, whether it be monthly or at the end of the year or in the long term. So I want to go over with you four different ways that you are actually um, experiencing this income or this profit. So the, I created this scenario here on a rental uh, property um, analyzer on bigger pockets. You may have your own spreadsheet that you use, but it's always a great idea to analyze your property before you get into it, just to make sure it makes sense for you financially. Um, it may not make sense for you in the first year, but like a lot of investments, as you start getting into year two, year five, year 10, it begins to make even more sense. And I'm gonna go over that with you right now. So in the first scenario here, we have rental cash flow. <clears throat> so rental cash flow, is um, it's going to be the difference between your monthly income, which is coming from rent, and the expenses that you have to pay out each month or each year. So in this scenario here, this rental property is creating $1,000 a month um, from the rent coming in from the tenant, and the expenses are roughly $591 per month. Okay, so give an example what some of the expenses may be. Might be your mortgage, property taxes, property insurance, um, the money you're paying a property manager to take care of the property. And then we also have theoretical expenses that you want to add in uh, as a buffer or a cushion. Uh, in this case, we have 15% for things like repairs and maintenance or capital expenditures, like when you have to replace the roof. And then also vacancy. Uh, rates like when the property is empty and you're not collecting rent when you're turning it over or waiting for a tenant to move in So in this scenario, we have the rent is a thousand dollars per month. The expenses are five hundred and ninety one dollars per month I'm rounding up. So in this case the cash flow on this property for the owner is four hundred and nine dollars every month while they own it passively what you do with that money is your choice It's always a good idea to save it for um, when you might need it, for repairs, maintenance, or even to be able to use the save to purchase another property, for example. Okay, we just covered the first scenario. The second scenario is gonna be on money that you're making because rent prices will increase over time. So in this scenario here, um, and, and based on the scenario, what, what's going on in Charlotte, North Carolina, um, in the good areas and the bad areas and rent, we're, we're getting about an average increase each year of about 3%. So basically, your property is going to make 3% more money each year that, uh, that you rent it out. And um, in this scenario, um, this is hedging inflation. So let's say inflation is 1% per year and you're increasing your rent each year by 3% you can see how that could be a very good form of income for you. I'll give you a scenario here on this report, okay? So we've got um, your annual income in year one at $1,000 per month is $12,000. And in year two, it goes to $12,360. And year five, it's 13506 And by the time you're in year 30 and your mortgage is paid off, it's uh, $28,279 um, per year, which is not bad. Your money is growing each year. Great. So let's go into the third scenario here. Let's talk about the tenant paying down your mortgage principal. So every month you're collecting money from the tenant, and hopefully you're using that money to pay your mortgage down. So every month and every year that goes by, you're creating equity in the property, value in the property, because you're paying off the principal value that you owe on the loan, okay? So here's an example on this report here. Here is uh, 
equity that um, that uh, your your um, in this scenario, you've got your loan balance being paid off by the tenant. So in year one, your loan balance, and I round up 47000 In year five, it's 43383 Let's go to year 10. Now it's down to 37954 And then in year 30, it's basically paid off. So you're basically your expenses are going down drastically and your profit goes up once that property's paid off so every year that mortgage is being paid down and you're creating more equity in the property the fourth scenario that i want to go over with you is property values are actually increasing every year now you may have some years where property values go up and they may go down but over time on average Properties increase in value nationwide between three to five percent. So in this scenario here, you can see here that the property value is $102,000. In year five, it goes up to $110,408. In year 15, it jumps up to $134,500, and I'll round up $87. And then 30 years later, hopefully you're retired by then, the property is worth $181,136. Theoretically, applying that 3 to 5% rule on the um, property appreciation each year. So you may want to will this property to your heirs. You may want to sell it off and use it as money to live off of when you retire. Or you may just want to keep it and live off of the cash flow that you have. Assuming that your mortgage is paid off, your cash flow will be very high and very secure for that matter. And then in addition to that, let's say, for example, you're running these numbers and it appears that, you know what, I have no cash flow in this property. I'm actually in the red every month. Are you really in the red? Let's think about that for a moment. Okay. So you got to look at it this way. The IRS allows you to to write off and have deductions on, on your expenses, certain expenses. And you want to talk with your accountant about this. I'm not an accountant. But a lot of expenses such as property management fees, real estate fees, um, repairs and maintenance, um, the insurance on your mortgage, things like that you can write off on your taxes. Discuss this with your accountant. There's also um, a depreciation that the IRS allows you to write off because they assume that over time, all assets will wear out. So when you work with and talk with your accountant, you can write off depreciation on your roof, on improvements you made to the property. So the, the expenses may not see as, seem as bad as it appears on a, at the end of the year, than it does on a month-to-month -month basis. Also, think about it this way. Let's say you had, you, you, you had a 401k with your work or you had an IRA account that you paid into every month or every year, okay? Let's say you pay into it every year or every month. Let's use $100 or $300 a month as an example, Okay, and you're assuming that your stock or your IRA is going to go up by 7% each month. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe there's a crash in the stock market. Who knows? Nobody knows how that goes. Very volatile. But in this situation, a lot of people don't have a problem contributing $100 a month to $1,000 a month without seeing cash flow on a monthly basis. So it's very similar to being in the red on a monthly basis because they know that down the line when they sell off the stocks or the assets in the IRA or 401k, they hope to make profit at that time, but they're not experiencing cash flow on a monthly basis. And that's very similar to if you own a rental property and let's say you're, in, you're breaking even this month and you're not making any cash flow, but you still are making money on the increase in the uh, property values and the rent values over time, and then also the tenants paying off your mortgage for you. 
let's say you're in the red each month where you have to contribute two to three hundred dollars a month to pay off your expenses okay it may not always seem like the best investment or the best scenario but will that be forever i mean people do that with an ira or 401k and they don't expect to see income on a monthly basis but in this scenario if you're paying out one to three hundred dollars a month in the red each month over time as the rent increases and your mortgage starts getting paid down, that's gonna start evening out when you're breaking even. And then at some point you will be making profit, but that money is not being wasted. Just like when you invest it into your 401k or IRA, you are investing that into your, your asset, your investment. And over time, after 10 years or so, you will start making a return on your money, as you can see in this chart here. Annual income starts at 12,000, it ends up at after 30 years, 28,000. Your expenses start at 7,000. They go up to say 8,500 because inflation, infla inflation may be 1% a year. That's not that much of a difference over 30 years. Your operating expenses only go up a little bit. Your mortgage payment, it stays consistent over the 30 year period, as you can see here. But your cash flow, if it starts off at 4,900 per year, in 10 years, you're at 8,000, and in 30 years, you're making close to $20,000 per year in cash flow. And look at your rate of income. Starts off at almost 14.77%, and it goes up to 59% over 30 years. Look at the property value, starting off at 102,000, ends up at 181,000. The equity in your property that you've earned due to you know increased property values and the tenant paying off your mortgage, it starts off at 55,000. It's like a bank account. You've got a $55,000 bank account. In 30 years, that bank account's worth $181,000, okay? Look at your loan balance. It's being paid off. 30 years, it's paid off. Now let's look at the profit if you sold it, okay, in 30 years. If you, if you bought it this year, if you sold it this year, you make $20,000. In 10 years, you can make $108,000. But in 30 years, if you sell it, it could theoretically make you $475,000. So this is not a bad scenario for you. Very dependable way to invest your money controlling an asset. If you have any questions about this or you need any assistance kind of analyzing your property, just give me a call. I'm happy to help you. You can contact me on the information following this video. Thanks so much.